As one of the most common corals around Hawaii, the distinctively shaped rice coral helps build the reef ecosystem that supports fish and marine life. It creates sand for our famous beaches, forms reefs that shape surf spots, and in that way supports tourism and the economy. So the recent outbreak of disease in rice coral populations is alarming for scientists and ocean enthusiasts. Graduate student Christina Runyon was among the first to report the 2011 outbreak. Another student and I were out in the field and we were doing our last day of surveys. It was our last site of around this whole entire island and uh, what we came across was instead of finger corals, which we were looking at disease, we came across the rice corals in which a whole area was just completely wiped out and very recently within the last week. Uh, we came across another section where there was new death happening and we knew we had a problem. Um, as we swam along our transect, we counted over 25 colonies within a small area that were either completely dead or almost completely dead. Um, from that, we went ahead and we responded and let Dr. Greta Abbey know that we had an outbreak going on and began Baywise surveys after that. We knew this disease, acute Montipro white syndrome, um, occurred in Kanye Bay. We've been studying it. We know it causes tissue loss, we know it can be fatal. But what we were seeing before, our baseline levels, were a colony here, maybe a colony there, and that's about it. This time what we're seeing is hundreds of corals dying from this disease all at once. This is where the problem arises, is that radical increase in the mortality from these diseases. What is a little um, unsettling about this second disease outbreak, so our first one was March 2010, it's occurred again a year and a half later, even worse, is that our reefs here in Hawaii is starting to look very similar to the pattern that first emerged in the Florida Keys. In the Florida Keys, they used to have a, a dominant coral, the Elkhorn, and their staghorn corals were their most common corals. And way back in the 1980s, they too started getting an outbreak here of a coral disease they called white band. It was a tissue loss disease, like our white syndrome's a tissue loss disease. And those events started coming more and more uh, common and what we the outcome today is that those corals 90 percent of the population keys wide are dead they're gone and in fact those corals are now on the endangered species list now Florida's reefs way back then had the same chronic human stressors our reefs have overfishing land-based pollution human usage so we have the same stressors that these corals are having to deal with day after day and now we're starting to see the same occasional disease outbreak pattern that occurred back then. What we want to do is take a proactive approach here. We know what happened in the Florida Keys. We know what the outcome was. What we hope to do is be ahead of the game here, get the research done to understand these diseases so that we can do something about it. Not get rid of them, but manage them so that we don't have the kind of mortality across the islands that the Florida Keys had across the Keys. In order to understand these disease processes, we have active research going on here, and these are multi-investigator um, studies where we're looking at, I work with Dr. Sean Callahan at UH Microbiology Department, and he's looking at the bacterial component of this disease, because we have pretty good evidence this is a bacterial infection. So he's looking to identify the bacterial strains and to understand the pathogen. We have coral biologists, myself and Dr. Finney Cox at UH West Oahu, that are trying to understand the coral uh, um, defense component and how the environment might be affecting these disease processes. We also work with Dr. Terry Work, who is a USGS scientist in the Wildlife Health Center, and he's a disease expert looking at this. So by trying to understand the pathogen, the host and the environment and how those are all interacting to produce these disease outbreaks. What we hope to do is be able to make recommendations on how to do decrease the mortality from these disease events. We can't stop the disease, but we can sort of contain it or limit the amount of death to our corals from the disease outbreaks, or those are our hopes. And the more we know, the higher the probability we can make some suggestions.